Welcome to Real Talk, the show where we look at issues facing our youth. My name is Ome Kongo, I'm your host, and today we have a, 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 a repeat visitor for the, the second time, Mr. Bomani Armah is in the studios with us. Bomani D. Might Armah, he also goes by not a rapper. He is a, a, a rapper, a poet, a speaker, and just an all-around renaissance man and entrepreneur. And he's just going to give us some insight about the music business and just what it really takes to live your dreams out there. Bomani, welcome back to Real Talk. Thank you. Appreciate you having me. How have you been? Man, I'm good. I'm still trying to take over the world. So, yeah, you know, yeah, yeah. We talked about a little pinky in the brain. Yeah, yeah definitely. <laughs> we haven't figured out who's who yet. Yeah, I know, right? We can pull <laughs> the brain. Right? There we go. There we go. At least nothing will get messed up. We'll make it happen. <laughs> no, de definitely. And, and the reason why I wanted to, to have you back was mm -hmm. because you're one of the people that I see out there who are really making strong headways in the field of, of independent music. And you've seen everything from you know, being at the bottom to being in meetings with record executives. And we have so many young people out there who want to explore careers in music. And I just want you to, you know, share some insights about it. So for, by your definition, what does being an independent artist mean? Um, being an independent artist is being able to handle all of your business inside, you know, your own four walls, whether it's your room or your house. I've seen successful independent, I mean, Def Jam was started in a dorm room. Mm -hmm. um, and so it's completely possible for young people to do this. Uh, it's something I've been doing since I was young, and I've learned a lot about it, and I share it with young people in many of the workshops that we do. Uh, but the first thing I would tell somebody who's doing it independently is to make sure that they're an artist first. Um, some people, wow. uh, I mean, <laughs> hip-hop has distorted it to the point where some people think it's a quick way to make some money. Mm -hmm. um, and I apologize, not hip-hop, the media <laughs> has distorted it okay. to the point that it's, it's a quick way to make money and it's not like um, very few people as much as you know artists who are hot at some moment out of nowhere like two chains pops up mm -hmm. first of all he's been doing it for um, over a decade mm -hmm. and second of all like they rise and they fall really quickly but people who are independent artists continue to have a career no matter what kind of record label situation they're in no matter if their music is the hot music at the moment mm -hmm. and the reason they can do that is because they're fully invested in the culture um, that's why go-go bands here in the Washington, D.C. metropolitan area can survive whether or not one of them blows up or not because mm -hmm. they, they, there's a culture that goes with it. Um, that's why I see the same thing in the spoken word poetry community. Mm -hmm. I mean, that's one of the places that we've seen each other most when we first yeah, met. Yeah. Um, there are people who can make complete careers out of it because they're completely invested in this culture and they learned how to take their interest and their passion for their art form and turn it into a business, but mm -hmm. not people who started off business-minded and like, like, let me go try to exploit this culture. Yeah. Um, it happens, but you know, if you really want to be a body, you, you need to find the art that you're really into, and that will help you, especially push through the tough times. But let, let me challenge that a little bit, because you, you said, you know, the media is part of the problem. Mm -hmm. You know, I throw out a couple of names to you. Justin Bieber, mm -hmm. Susan Boyle. Mm -hmm. You know, the, this whole concept that we sell to people of overnight successes. And, you know, Justin Bieber posting some videos on YouTube, and Susan Boyle did her show. What I've seen, and, and you've probably seen this more than I have been mm -hmm. deeper in, into, the, into the independent music world than I have, is that so many people are putting out everything for that one shot. You know, I'm just going to keep posting YouTube videos till I get 50 million hits, mm -hmm. or, or, or somebody's going to discover me. Mm -hmm. I mean, do you, do you ever really get discovered? Is that, is that a misnomer for, 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 for young folks? It, it does. I, it happens. You know, mm -hmm. people win the lottery, mm -hmm. but you can't hold up the lottery winner as the norm. They're mm -hmm. the exception. Mm -hmm. uh, the majority of the artists that you see out there were making money independently and the bigger media giants ended up picking them up. I can think most recently of Wiz Khalifa. Mm -hmm. Wiz Khalifa had a career outside of whether or not, whether or not a major record label picked him up. He was in a position to turn down deals. Um, and that's, and more, more artists, Big Crit was doing the same thing. Mm -hmm. A lot of artists that are coming up right now have to do it independently. The first, I mean, it's not the first, but the one that caught my attention most immediately was uh, Ludacris back in the 90s. Mm -hmm. He was a radio personality <coughs> and he was selling mm -hmm. tens of thousands of records on his own independently, which is the story of hip hop anyway. Hip hop yeah, is about yeah. out, out the back of your trunk. Mm -hmm. um, hip hop is about, uh, and, and it's not just hip hop now, mm -hmm. uh, with the way that the internet has turned everyone's website into their own street corner. You know right. what I'm saying? They can yeah, hustle, yeah, yeah. you know, and so I'm talking to book uh, publishers now, and they want you to have 50,000 followers on Twitter mm -hmm. and on Facebook before mm -hmm. they give you a book deal. Um, Hold on, fifty thousand. Just make sure I work on that. Right. So it's it's about a basic understanding of that. Um, 
I mean, one of the hard things for me to swallow, and sometimes it happens. I mean, there's Basquiat, there are other artists mm -hmm. who find a way to just be the artist and everything else just floats and takes them to where they're supposed to be. Mm -hmm. But unfortunately, you're going to have to have some level of discipline. You're mm -hmm. going to have to have some math. You're going to have to have some people skills. Maybe that doesn't have to be your focus, but you can't, you can't not have those things and just create the art and create a living, you know, that you think you, you deserve. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. You have to treat it as a lifestyle. Um, and I've been fortunate enough to meet young people at a young age and see them move from like 15 year olds to 22 year olds with careers mm -hmm. who, who can perform anywhere and everywhere and get paid to do it and who might not end up on the major radio stations, but they will come to your major festival. Mm -hmm. um, they will come to the colleges and universities and they will get paid to do it. Mm -hmm. And that's, that's the kind of career people need to start understanding is possible. Um, which is also why having art education in school is so Wow. So, you know, yeah, yeah, not only yeah. the actual art, but the business of the art mm -hmm. to be able to do it beyond your hobby. And that's something that we need to make sure we, we, can, we let people understand they can do. Now, I've heard Talib Kweli mention in an interview that he feels the best way nowadays is, is to go independent. Mm -hmm. Do you feel like if, if people really get into it, like you say, get into the business mindset, the art education mm -hmm. aspect of it, do you really feel like independent is the route to go and we shouldn't be waiting for a Sony and, and Warner Brothers or, or whoever to sign us? Well, th for the most part, they won't even do it. Unless, mm -hmm. unless you are, I mean, evidently, Justin Bieber is phenomenally talented. <laughs> and <laughs> enough people somehow. recognize that, yeah. you know, so you can't take away from them. There mm -hmm. has to be something going on there. Mm -hmm. But that's not going to... Um, executives in any of these media fields are not looking for raw talent anymore. They're not wow. trying to develop the talent. They want mm -hmm. the talent to be there. They want to be able to write a check to some consultants they know and to you and then push something that you've already begun to create. Mm -hmm. But they, they don't do artist development anymore. I mean, mm -hmm. A&R is a position that almost doesn't exist in any of these, mm -hmm. these things anymore. And besides, like I said, if it's your lifestyle, this is one thing I tell artists all the time, young, mm -hmm. young artists especially, being an artist is a lifestyle. Um, it's about sacrificing things. Like, I, I don't go on vacation that often, I, but I don't feel like I need a day off. Mm -hmm. You know yeah, what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah. Um, and so it's, it's, it's supposed to be a sacrifice, but it isn't. Mm -hmm. uh, but you have to be able to think that way. Mm -hmm. I don't buy new shoes as often as I would like to sometimes, <laughs> but I would rather not buy the new shoes and be able to do what I do for a living than try to keep up with the credit card payments. It would mm -hmm. take me there. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, and so it's not that you should expect to live poorly, um, but you need to be able to make your living whether or not you... Um, another good example. Who's the guy from G-Unit? Um, Lloyd Banks. Lloyd Banks. Yeah. Lloyd Banks was left for dead in the hip-hop world. He did Beamer, Benz, and Bentley independently. It caught on. It blew back up. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? His next project didn't do nearly as much, but he's still going to hustle. Mm -hmm. You know, he's not going to stop. Yeah, yeah, um, yeah. Shoot, I had my own success with, an interna with a national, somewhat international song, um, and I don't feel like, um, I feel like it's going to happen again. Mm -hmm. uh, not even on some, I think I'm extremely talented just because I'm not going to stop making music and I'm mm -hmm. not going to stop promoting it. Mm -hmm. And, you know, it's going to keep happening. And I have to, I found a way to build my career where I can keep doing it and be able to ride those waves. It's a very Dow way of, you know what I'm saying, uh -huh. of being balanced, uh, of doing it. And so I think that's something young people need to understand. Mm -hmm. You can try to become, I see way too many young artists trying to do Chris Brown, trying to do Lil Wayne. You know what I'm saying? Instead of not the illegal Chris Brown assault no, part. No, no, no not at all. Oh, the music side, okay. yeah, going okay, straight yes. to that, mm -hmm. like, um, and not like just honing their craft and being able to do it independently if they get signed or not. Mm -hmm. um, and those are the kind of artists that I'm looking. For, you know. No. What what is what has your journey been like to, to to get to this point? I mean, talk to me about you know some of the albums that you put right. out. You know, s some of the lessons that you've learned that that have carried you this far. I mean, we know so many people who get to where you are right now mm -hmm. and they they give up. You know, they feel like the success hasn't come the way they wanted. I mean, talk a little bit about right. your your process to get to the wisdom you have right now. Well, I mean, definitely, I'm either determined or hard headed, depending on who <laughs> I ask. Uh -huh. uh, <laughs> Uh, I've, I've been doing um, independent music since I was about 20. I started off in a band as a drummer and a songwriter in a band called Lauda. Um, we, as a matter of fact, we made an album with a whole bunch of independent artists who were making noise, like the lead single um, from the lead singer from Fertile Ground, Navasha Day, mm -hmm. uh, with Raheem Devon before everybody knew who Raheem Devon was. Mm -hmm. uh, just a lot of people making moves. Um, I had my first, you know, big thing and then big breakup, even though they're still family, just dealing with the drama of a band. Um, mm -hmm. I've talked to people all the time. I tell people having a band is like being married <laughs> uh, to like five, six different people at once. Yeah, you know wow, so, wow. Um, 
I've been through that drama, made it to, through the other side of it. Uh, I always imagined my career sort of like Chuck Brown's, mm -hmm. um, in the sense that rest Chuck, in peace. Rest in peace. Yeah, yeah definitely mm -hmm. Chuck Brown. I'm all, but I, I, I told record executives executives this, which probably was a bad move, <laughs> um, because you know. But he's been able to maintain his career. You know, no matter what happened, he was playing. Till, he was playing till he couldn't anymore. Quite literally, that's the only thing he did. Um, and I never saw myself blowing up to the point that I did with the success of Read a Book. Um, and there's a oh, I could write a book about the rest yeah. of that from that. Um, but I was able to use that platform to push all the other stuff. Mm -hmm. You know, I, like I am not a crunk MC. You know, what mm -hmm. what I'm saying? I don't think anybody thought I was. But I was able to, you know, improve my spotlight and use that to shine lights on the other things that I was doing, mm -hmm. on the youth work that I was doing, on the, um, uh, on just, just trying to be creative. Mm -hmm. um, and so now I put out a mixtape every year. Um, I have an uh, audio video production company, well, actually two companies that have combined on um, Park Triangle Productions and Urban Intellect Studios. Um, so now I call myself a creative concierge. Anything mm -hmm. you need done creatively, um, I help people do it. And I've been able to use the experience mm -hmm. of, you know, being on national radio, being on national television, being flown around the country, mm -hmm. being asked if I wanted a record deal. Um, it's funny because when they were asking me about my if I wanted a record deal, they wanted, there was a particular sound they fell in love with and wanted me to repeat. Mm -hmm. um, and it's something I probably could have done. But I'm an artist performing anything else. Yeah. And I definitely, seeing myself as Chuck Brown before it all happened, I think I didn't worry about trying to ride any particular wave. And we'll see if history is right, if that's what I should have done. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> yeah. It's interesting. So I, I, I bring that to young people. Um, both as clients who come to me, and then also I teach, with a lot, I do a lot of workshops with a lot of organizations in the, in the metropolitan area. And so you provide that that art education piece yes. that you say so many young people have not been getting in schools. Right, right. And that's I mean, intentional. Both, both literally, like how to count music, how to write rhymes, how to perform, how to project in front of a crowd, mm -hmm. and then how to, if nothing else, when young people learn how to create art, especially the art they hear on the radio. The, the fourth wall disappears, the, the curtain gets pulled and you can see The Wizard of Oz mm -hmm. and you realize that anybody with an idea and a camera could be Little Wayne mm -hmm. and it demystifies some of, you know, because we, we hold up media people to ungodly heights, yes. you know what I'm saying? Yes. Everyone, yes. both positive yes. and negative. Yes. Yes. And when you show young people that anybody can do it, um, these are just people with ideas, they're just like me and you and the smoking cameras disappear. Mm -hmm. That's one of my favorite dead present lines. When you show that to young people, it opens their mind up to a lot of things. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, so how to interpret media images and how, where they can go in their careers. That's, that, that's amazing. And you, you have two, two boys yourself yes, that yes. about five, five years old now, and sometimes like, they travel with you and they're playing drums and yeah. getting involved in, in the music themselves. Is, is that how young we have to start with them nowadays? Oh, or are you just well, determined or hard-headed? <laughs> no, I'm, I'm determined and hard-headed, and I mean, I just keep them with me a lot. Um, yeah, I mean, yeah. I do know that I'm a public speaker because I was around my father, and he was a public speaker. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Either between being um, the director or the CEO of a company and being a minister, like I saw him speak and my mom said I always reacted to that. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? And so I'm not doing either of the things he did, but there are elements of it that I'm sure and I'm sure they're gonna rub off on my on my children as well. And I love having them around. Yeah, uh, they keep yeah, me on my yeah. toes. And it and it also gives me something I know what I need to write about. Even now having this conversation and one of the things I'm really gonna get into young people about is decoding media images. I realize I've let my sons watch more TV in the last couple months than I ever thought I would. Mm -hmm. and I realize how much they're inundated with commercials. Yeah. And um, young people need to be taught in school the same way they should also teach you how to balance a checkbook. Mm -hmm. They should also teach you how to count bars and beats. They should teach you what um, advertising agencies are doing. That's right. It's basic cultural education. It's basic getting people out there so kids know why they're reaction, reacting to brands and stuff like that. Well, I think this is this is great. I mean, and, and you mentioned talking about the bars. So we're going to hear a little bit of your bars uh, after we right. come back from this break. I mean, you've given us great insight so far. Thank you. We'll be right back with more Real Talk. Cotton balls. Duct tape. Spoon. Needle. Thread. Scalpel. The smallest moments can have the biggest impact on a child's life. Take time to be a dad today. Welcome back to Real Talk, the show where we look at issues facing our youth. My name is Ome Congo, and we've been talking to Bomani D. Might Arma. First of all, Bomani, I gotta say that you provided a great deal of insight, and I really hope that people who don't see the broadcast tonight, you know, will see it at another point and just really 
get it, learn about it, because nobody out there is talking about that. Diddy, all of these guys, are, they're not talking about that on the level that at least we feel that they should. Right. But you've talked a lot about your art, mm-hmm. and some people who may, not wa- be, who may be watching right now may not have heard your art before. Okay. So why don't you give us a little bit of what Not A Rapper raps about? Sure. <laughs> um, this piece is called The Hustle. Um, I don't do this for y'all, man. I do this for me. Yeah, I want a ball, but I do this for free. I'm a natural born artist. This hustle game was forcing it. I'm fortunate. I got a loving family who's supporting it. Now I got a family of my own who need me to be grown. I got to set the tone, build a home for microphones, show them how to get their hustle on. Music's in my bones. The hustle puts the muscle on. I got to get my weight up. Young rappers getting ate up like protein. I'm a dauphine. All these actors on Atkins, all that beef ain't getting no green. You want me on your team, putting videos on your screen with beats that are so fresh and so clean. My verses are the prescription for your addiction. Like codeine, the concepts I be flipping to find description. Like yo dreams, I'm a pop music fan. Never tried to be underground, so my album's about how the radio should sound. It should be smooth like lemonade on the porch, or hot like a blue flame from a torch, or convict you like when they call your name in the court, or get to the pain at its source, show you the dark side of the force and all those deep dark secrets in the places that you keep it, hoping no one will peep it. See what you sow before you reap it. What I'm giving you is priceless. My faults and my vices. Hope it'll guide you in a time of crisis. Start you off with Christ is, then lead you back to ISIS. I feel a chill as I write this. This is a real meal, so MCs, please bite this. I'm firmly in reality, where young minds are casualties, getting murdered by fallacies, burning brain cells instead of calories. That's why I talk for no salary, by life and sexuality to Mickey's and Mallory's, not natural born killers, not hustlers and dealers, not jail sale fillers. They know what real is. They're t- t- tired of the elders who were out here resenting them, tired of these corporations out here pimping them. Tired of these fake thug rappers representing them. That's why I was sent to them so my truth can enter them. So I got to keep on rapping for my ancestors in heaven and all the young lives that I've taught since 97. And my father and my uncles and my cousins who are reverends. No more getting passed over because my bread is unleavened. I'll keep making moves. I keep on making headlines and doing this for brothers doing fed time and struggling to get work done by deadlines and get home to kiss my sons before bedtime. I try to keep it real. I won't lie. Rhyming don't pay the bills. I can't work a tie, so I must diversify. I can't rely on radio play or on these tours. So I stay editing videos and these movie scores. But if the shows dry up or if the audio work stops, I'm still in the worst spots, get much props for workshops. Check it. Here's a quick lesson. Call it music biz for dummies. Make music for the love, then sell it for the money. And if you look in the CD and it says D Mike, go ahead and cop the joint. Guaranteed it's tight. And if you download three or four and think they on point, not a rapper.com. Just buy the whole joint. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah. Was, wow. Okay. That's, um, <laughs> that felt good. Thank you. <laughs> yeah. It, it's, yeah it, I hope it felt as good as it sounded. Yeah. I mean, I, most of the raps I rhyme off are, are as much, if not more, for me than the audience. You know what mm-hmm. I'm saying? Just to, I know I embed into my spirit whatever I hear all the time. Yeah. So I try to say things to me that are real to me, that are important to me. And so I hope all artists do that, and I try to encourage artists to do that. You and, said something to the effect of. Do it in your heart, then sell it for the money. Uh, yeah, yeah, something yeah. Make, to that. Make music for the love, then sell it for the money. Yeah. Wow, that seems like a concept that has been lost uh, on up and coming artists nowadays. It yeah. seems like you know they just want, like I said, they just want the the the, the benefits without really putting out their their love. Right. I mean, what what's some artists be doing right now? Hearing hearing your insights right now. Okay, somebody's listening mm-hmm. and they say, you know what? I want to start taking his advice and start taking my stuff more seriously. Right. What does day one look like? And give you know day two, day three. Give us some steps. Right. Well, um, day one, if you're considering yourself an independent artist, is to set a timeline, mm-hmm. uh, a realistic timeline. Uh, we all know when you follow maps, when you follow schedules, it doesn't always go exactly the way the schedule is supposed to. But unless you have that path, you're going to end up getting scattered all over the place. Mm-hmm. So give yourself an, a realistic timeline. Understand that you need to understand... Um, both the production of the product and the promotion of the product, and that there are two different things. Mm -hmm. Um, You know, how you look doing it, who knows about you doing it, um, all that stuff happens after you've figured out what the product is, whether it's a book, whether it's a song, whatever. But make sure you set out this timeline. And this is something that I do with young people in both our workshops and then professionally with clients. Let them see step by step where we're going. Um, the hardest thing that I've been telling clients for them to swallow sometimes, especially when you're independent and used to hustling on a quick pace, is to make sure your product is done about three months before you release it. 
Mm -hmm. um, and the real ind independent artists that I know are used to like, especially now in the internet age, yeah, like yeah, yeah, age yeah. it comes out the studio, it, it hops online. And there's something to that. Like sometimes it'll catch on. Mm -hmm. um, shoot, it happened for me before. Mm -hmm. uh, but to be able to maintain it and to make sure you get the bang for your buck, you got to have your creative mind and you have to have your business mind and trying to have them work together is it's tough. Yeah. And even yeah. if you have two different people, even if you're an artist and you have a manager, um, you don't want to try to be doing both at the same time because they, mm -hmm. they start interrupting with each other. Mm -hmm. And so one of the things I'm just trying to give, give the young people that I work with and my clients is understanding the timeline of the things that they're doing. Map them out. Try to stick really close to it. Uh, but don't just do it. And don't give yourself unrealistic timelines. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. Don't set your release date before you get your product back. Wow. As hard as that wow. is, as hard as that is, uh, mm -hmm. one of the things that I'm doing now, and, and try not to give away too many of my secrets, but um, <laughs> is to have significant dates set up throughout the year mm -hmm. where you're already doing mm -hmm. something. Mm -hmm. And so mm -hmm. if your product is done around one of these dates that is sort of significant to you anyway, mm -hmm. you can keep the ball rolling. Yeah. You know what yeah, I'm saying? Yeah. Um, which, which, once again, it just takes fores foresight. Um, I'm, I'm looking t more than 10 years from now. I've got more yeah. than 2020 yeah. vision. You know That's what I'm saying? Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. yeah. And, and so you got to do that yearly. You got to do that by the, you know what happens? And you know what happens when we have children? It happens mm -hmm. when you, you get out of the college uh, mid 20s phase. You realize how long time is. Yeah. You realize, yeah. like, because yeah. yeah. when you're, you're 20, you're like, I got to get it done now. I got to get it done now. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. When you get to your mid 30s, you're like, you know, something five years is going to happen. Yeah. Because five yeah. years has happened to me like five times now <laughs> since I've been. Uh -huh old enough to uh, conceptualize it. Mm -hmm. And so mm -hmm. you got to start having the patience to work with that. Mm -hmm. um, and then, uh, I mean, then I would go back to the thing that I said in the previous state, uh, segment. It's just make sure you understand it's a lifestyle. Mm -hmm. um, the people who are rewarded with all the glitz and glamour that you see uh, with the music, even Mike, Michael Jackson, you know what I'm saying? Their family did not live, you know what I'm saying, the, the fabulous life that you see until after they put in a whole lot of work. That's right. And it happened when he was young, but it was still a lot of work. Mm -hmm. It was up late. It was traveling. Mm -hmm. All the kind of stuff that you want to you want to talk about, like it's a lifestyle. Um, and so just be prepared for it. Uh, but then also to understand that um, one of my favorite quotes is from Denzel Washington. Mm -hmm. He said that people told him uh, that he should go to school and finish school so he'd have something to fall back on. And he said, if I'm going to fall, why would I fall back? I'm just going to fall forward. Mm. Which to me was like really profound. Wow. Um, wow. And and you're right. I mean, people who think wow. they have security. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, it's yeah. one thing we've learned in the last four or five years with the recession and with the economy mm -hmm. is the myth of job security. That's right. That some people yeah. who think we have it worse off as independent people, we just understand the reality that at any moment we won't have a job. Mm -hmm. You know mm -hmm. what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. um, artists and independent people, independent artists, are more aware of that than the average person. Um, and so sometimes you've got to decide to take, the, take it into your own hands. Yeah. And uh, so I definitely think that's got to be part of how we re-educate people. Mm -hmm. Shoot, and hip-hop is the perfect way to do it because all, all your favorite hip-hop artists go on for track after track about how they did it independently to get where they are. Mm -hmm. um, even using all the cocaine metaphors that, <laughs> you know what I'm saying, that <laughs> yeah, the clips right, right, right. and Jay-Z um, use, yeah, you know what I'm saying? It's like, <laughs> exactly. But even then they, they put the exact same work ethic and the exact same strategies, mm -hmm. you know? Mm -hmm. um, and the same setup. So, oh, so, so set your timeline. Get a team around you. Um, do not be a jack of all trade and the masters of none. Okay. Um, educate yourself. Mm -hmm. Know what your publicist is supposed to be doing. Know what your manager is supposed to be doing. Your booking agent. Your lawyer. Know what they're supposed to be doing, but don't do it. Just mm -hmm. be able to ask the right questions. Mm -hmm. Be able to know what forms to look at. You know what I'm saying? But if you try to do them all, you'll also get stuck. Yeah. Um, yeah. And it also ties in with the timeline. Everything happens in seasons. Mm -hmm. um, I've learned through my business um, what months I don't do a lot of business. Uh, and I've learned how to plan my planning sessions and those things. Stuff that some, uh, I think both of us have the same passion. And that uh, is definitely. we've done a lot of things uh, independently as artists and as educators that we would like the next generation to be able to do easier than us. Yes. Um, yes and, so, and, and that's one of the things. And I've, like I said, I've been fortunate to watch 16-year-olds turn into 22, 23 year olds with careers in this. Mm -hmm. um, and, and so it's really good when you realize the lesson. And then that also means talking to a lot of people. Mm -hmm. uh, one of the people that I'm talking to a lot right now is um, Dr. Alvin Jones. I'm actually doing an event with him called The Even Place. Mm -hmm. And uh, he, his business is 
disseminating wisdom. Yeah, he interviews yeah. authors all the time, and he discusses what makes people um, popular, what makes people famous, what makes people money, mm-hmm. what makes people mm-hmm. successful, and giving that information to other people. And so me, you know, nice. sitting under his wing and sh- seeing how he not only applies that wisdom, but makes sure everyone else has that wisdom mm-hmm. is a great thing. It's a great mm-hmm. thing for all educators. Mm-hmm. Um, um, and, and independent artists. And so that's, that's something that I really encourage people to do is find somebody to sit under. I mean, like I said, I know you do the same thing. Yeah. You're always sending me quotes to some of the favorite people <laughs> that you've met um, and the knowledge that you've learned from them. So as an artist, you can't divorce yourself from that. Mm-hmm. you got to find some time to engage, um, but you got to have it all mapped out Yeah. and yeah. make sure you, you knock out what your art form is. I can't wait to see what this generation is coming up with artistically. I think some people can wait on that. <laughs> on some of the yeah. stuff that's coming out now. Yeah. Well, what's if what's? I mean, you, you're just hitting people with, okay. with, this, with this knowledge. You're just okay. hitting them. Well, people you. gotta, you know, rewind. I mean, what's what's one piece of advice that you wish you knew when you first started out mm-hmm. that that you you'd like to give to people who who are starting out right now? Um, I guess it would be a way to find. For me, what I wish I had known was how much time it would take to find my passion mm-hmm. and to have more patience with it. Mm-hmm. Um, I was told school, college was the place to be for me. Mm-hmm. Um, college wasn't the place for me to be. What was needed for me to do was to continue my education at all times, mm-hmm. um, even if that meant taking classes. But it wasn't necessarily, you know, picking a major at 18. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? That kind mm-hmm. of thing was like mm-hmm. was not was not was not where I should have been. Um, and there are other ways for people to pursue what they want to be without going the normal route. Mm-hmm. Um, we, need to, we need to encourage young people to improve themselves, to find their dreams, to follow their dreams. Mm-hmm. Um, I don't know if I would have encouraged pe- young people to go into debt to do it anymore. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Uh-huh. Um, I would find a way for you to find a job. And this is, this is where I was going to begin with this was mm-hmm. find a job in your artistic field that you can do at a lower salary when you become 18 or 19. Yeah, yeah, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. The fact that I like to write songs and make beats of things I should have been able to do in recording studios or in publishing houses. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? That I could have done at a younger job that would have got me into the business so I can discover more about the business without having to, you know, and do it for work and learning mm-hmm. at the same time. Mm-hmm. Um, and that's things to try to figure out. Um, as much as we're inundating young people with, you know, passing the SATs and passing all these tests that they got to do, we should try to get them involved in as many different things as possible so they can find out at 18 and 19 what lower level job in a company they should find themselves in mm-hmm. to, to learn the skills that way. Mm-hmm. Um, that's the way our parents and grandparents did it. Um, and now that we're seeing that college educated people are having as much problem as not college educated people sometimes finding jobs in their majors, yeah, it's yeah. become not having those degrees, it's become just having an expertise in something. Mm-hmm. And so hopefully mm-hmm. you can find something that you love and that you're passionate about because mm-hmm. you're going to spend all your time doing it anyway. Right, right. You right, know what I'm right. saying? Um, some people should be in an office and they mm-hmm. should be able to find ways to figure that out younger. Mm-hmm. And so finding a way to figure those things out at 17, 18 mm-hmm. is, the, is the advice I wish I'd gotten and that's what I give the young people all the time. And in, in, in closing, where mm-hmm. can people go if they, they want to find you online, hear more of your work, see what you're up to? Sure. Uh, you can find me at www.notarapper.com. I am not a rapper. I'm a poet with a hip-hop style. Uh, I do a lot of things. I'm a creative concierge. I'm a producer. I'm an educator. You can also find me at The Even Place. Uh, just go evenplace.com. You can find me there as well. Uh, just love making music, making art, educating people. Um, talking politics, being on your show, that yeah. type of things. So definitely keep up with me, not a rapper.com. All right. Well, you definitely educated us, and we look Thanks. forward to the, to the third visit. Thank you. Appreciate it. That's going to do it for another episode of Real Talk. Once again, my name is Ome Congo. If you have any questions or comments, feel free to email me at realtalk at omekongo.com. And remember, our youth are 50% of our population, but 100% of our future. Let's make sure we're taking care of them. See you next time.